All right, hello and welcome to this video on the Pythagorean Theorem. This is our second video on Pythagorean Theorem. Um, thank you for following along, taking notes, thinking about this, and not just watching. Um, all right, so we've already talked for the about the Pythagorean Theorem for a week. So we know that the Pythagorean Theorem states that the squares of the legs, okay, so A and B, when we square those and add those together, it equals the square of the hypotenuse. And this holds true for every right triangle. All right, we can, the first type of problem we can do this, we can use this on is finding the hypotenuse of a right triangle when given the legs. We can always label our hypotenuse by coming out from the right angle across it. So this is gonna be our C. Our A and our B are interchangeable. So then we can go ahead and we can put these three numbers into our equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're going to have 37 squared plus 51 squared equals x squared. And that's our missing side of the triangle. So now what we need to do is we need to go over to our calculator. We need to, to put those numbers in. And then at the end, remember, we square root. So we're going to switch over to our calculator. We're gonna take 37 squared plus 51 squared, hit enter, so it's 3,970. Then we are going to square root the answer and we get 63.0. So we're gonna have um, 3,970, so 3,970 equals x squared. Then we square rooted and we got x equals 63.0. Um, now, the reason why I leave it as 0 0.0 and not just 63 is to show that, that we rounded and that it wasn't exactly 63. So that's the first type of question is finding the hypotenuse. Notice we added to combine. Okay, That's going to be different here when we're finding the leg. We also want to notice that x is larger than either of the legs. If it's not larger, we didn't do it right. Okay, So let's go ahead and look at the structure of the next one. So here, I'm going to identify C. C is 37. A and B are interchangeable. Okay, so I'm going to take into A squared plus B squared equals C squared again. And I am going to write X squared plus 24 squared equals 37 squared. Now, this is where we have to think about our solving techniques. So we are not going to end up um, adding together the 37 and 24 squared, that would cause x to be bigger. We want x to be smaller. So what we need to do is we need to subtract. So we are going to subtract over the 24 squared. And we're going to get x squared equals. Now we're going to take this right here and type it in our calculator. So I'm going to flip over to my calculator. We're going to type in 37 squared minus 24 squared, which is 793 and then we are going to square root that answer. So I'm going to write down the 793. Whoops. 793. Okay. Having some difficulty here. All right. Now we're back. So we're going to go ahead and square root both sides. And we get x equals. Let me flip back to my calculator. The square root of the answer is 28.16. Or we can round that to 28.2. Now, as I go back and check for reasonableness of answer, I it, it makes sense. X is smaller than 37. 28 is smaller than 37. That makes sense. I'm feeling good and, and it looks good. Now, the next problem type, converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And this states that if three sides of a triangle satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, then the triangle is right. So this is literally the reverse. So now we're checking. If I have a 1 centimeter by 2.4 centimeter by 2.6 centimeter triangle, is this a right triangle? Well, I don't know. Let's put it in the theorem. A and B don't matter. C is always the longest side. So we're going to write this as 1 squared plus 2.4 squared equals 2.6 squared. Now, I need to take this into my calculator to check. Do I know this off the top of my head? No. So we're going to go to our calculator. 1 squared plus 2.4 squared and 2.6 squared. Okay. 
they both equal 6.76. So in fact, this satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. So the answer to this question is yes, it's a right triangle. All right, let's look at the second example. Okay, C is the longest side. So I'm gonna put in 0 0.9 squared plus 1.2 squared equals 1.7 squared. Again, this goes into our calculator. We use our calculator to check. If they're equal, it's a yes. If they're not equal, it's a no. So let's open up our calculator. So it's 0 0.9 squared plus 1.2 squared and then 1.7 squared. Those are different. We have 2.25 and 2.89. So 2.25 does not equal 2.89. So since we have a not equal, this is not a right triangle. Okay, so these are the three problem types we learned, we talked about last week. Finding a hypotenuse, we add together the squares of the legs and then square root. Finding a leg, we subtract the square of the hypotenuse by the square of the leg and then square root. The converse problems, checking to see if it's a right triangle, we put the numbers into the equation. So those are the three problem types we talked about last week. We're gonna continue to focus and master those this week. But today what we're gonna add is finding the length of a segment AB. And this is like a real like, geometric type problem i can't count it because there's no sort of like i there's no way to know what this length is okay it's less than one because this here this little blue green segment i'm drawing that would have a length of one okay we don't know but what we can do is we can turn these segments into right triangles and the segment becomes the hypotenuse and then we can use the pythagorean theorem and again we will talk about this together in class um, in the next class, but this is kind of your first exposure to it. So if I draw a vertical line down from A and then I go over to B, what kind of shape did I just make? That's a right triangle here on the coordinate grid, okay? Um, and this is our first experience here as eighth graders with the coordinate grid. We'll talk a little bit more about it on problem six, but I know that blue length is two. I know the red length, I can count it, one, two, three, four, five. This is a right angle because the structure of the coordinate grid, vertical lines and horizontal lines are what are called perpendicular, meaning they intersect at 90 degree angles, meaning it's a right angle. So now this AB is literally our C. So we can go ahead and we can say two squared plus five squared equals C squared. And then we can go ahead and solve it just like we did um, every other problem we've been working with with the Pythagorean theorem. So two squared and five squared. I'm gonna clear out all this work. Look at all that work in our calculator. Two squared and five squared. Square root of the answer, 5.4. So we're gonna get 29 equals C squared. We are going to square root both sides. So C equals 5.4. And again, let's look at this. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, it really does. It looks like it's a length of, of about a little more than five, but less than six, okay? All right, this should say, a little typo here, segment CD. Um, in language arts, proofreading was never my strong suit. So uh, still here as an adult, I need to work on my proofreading. Um, again, we wanna find how long CD is. We can't just count it. We've got to figure out a way to find the distance from C to D. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a right triangle. So I'm going to draw the horizontal line that would get me over right below D and then the vertical line. And then we can count the lengths. And remember, you're counting the boxes. So C, one, two, three. And then for D, we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. So those are the legs. C is gonna be this length out here. Remember, this is a right triangle. So we can go ahead and say three squared plus six squared equals C squared. Now, right here, jump over to the calculator, square and square root. So three squared and six squared. 
square root the answer, we end up with 6.7. So uh, this is 45 equals C squared, just to write out all the steps. Square root, square root. C equals um, 6.7. All right, excellent. So that's the other type of problem that we're gonna do is finding the distance of a segment on a coordinate grid, okay? Now, number six, I ask us to actually plot the points before we find the distance. So, little quick um, reminder on the coordinate grid here. Remember, X goes le right and left. This is X and negative X. Y goes up and down. Okay, we, you talked about this in 6th and 7th grade. Every ordered pair is x, comma, y. Okay, so the first number tells us to go right or left. The second number tells us to go up or down. So here we're going to go. So our first point is going to be negative 3 on the x. Okay, and then we're going to go up 1 on the y. So we're going to get these points plotted in the right spots. So negative 3... So I'm going to come over from the origin. That's the center of the grid. We're going to come over one, two, three, and up one. That's where our new point is going to go. So this is negative three, one at X. We will graph on the coordinate grid all year. You will be a master at this. Just you wait. Okay, so now we're going to start at the origin again. My new point is four on the X, three on the Y. So I'm going to count over. One, two, three, four, and up three. One, two, three. That is the location of my second point, four, three. So I'm gonna put a Y there. You can go ahead and connect the dot because we're finding, or the points, and we are finding the length of X, Y. So here we had to put it on the graph, and now we're gonna go ahead and find the horizontal distance. Remember, horizontal distance is left and right, the X distance, and then the vertical distance. So my vertical distance is two, my horizontal distance is seven. Now, all I have to do is I have to put this into the Pythagorean theorem. Same problem we just did above. Two squared plus seven squared equals C squared. That is gonna be the length of X, Y. So now I can go to my calculator. Two squared and seven squared is 53. We're gonna square root the answer and we get 7.3. So C equals 7.3. So that's the pro that's like kind of the next problem type that we're going to really focus on this week is how can we find out how far numbers are apart from each other or how far points are apart from each other on the coordinate grid and we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem even on the coordinate grid. All right, thank you for listening and following along. Well done.